hello friends have a good day so in last video we come across a design of a single plate clutch as well as a multi plate clutch and today we'll discuss a design of cone clutch so cone clutch is what uh, it is a little uh, modified uh, shape of a single plate clutch so now if you compare uh, the cone clutch with a single plate clutch or multi plate clutch is uh, the force or pressure is uh, needed uh, or required to engage the uh, driving shaft to the uh, driven shaft is uh, less uh, in comparison with a single plate clutch as well as uh, the multi plate clutch so here the driven member is uh, aligned with asbestos uh, leather cork or wood and uh, as uh, it is a cone the uh, semi cone angle is arranged from uh, 10 degree to 15 degree so the normally suitable angle is uh, 12.5 degree now these two diagrams are from a uh, design data and book uh, that is what uh, madhavan okay balavaridi and uh, madhavan so right figure side figure indicates uh, the forces acting on uh, inner cone and uh, the left figure it is what a cone clutch coupling so they are calling it as a coupling okay. so now let's go for uh, the next uh, diagram here now this is what a clear diagram now basically we have an uh, two shafts here one is driving shaft another one is a driven shaft now driven shaft is connected with the help of cone here as well as uh, this cone is uh, attached with the assembly that is what engaging spring as well as a shifting collar now cup is attached to the driving shaft the cup is attached to the driving shaft with the help of a sunk key here now the friction lining is going to be fixed or adhered to the cone surface here it is fixed or adhered to the cone surface uh, comparison uh, and uh, as I said it is a modified or you can say it is a uh, entirely different uh, type of uh, a clutch now the advantages of uh, cone clutches are easy to engage and disengage uh, as the surfaces are going to contact uh, with a little inclination so not as an exactly perpendicular surfaces and uh, it is simple in construction and as I said uh, it is required less axial uh, force uh, uh, to engage the or to disengage the uh, driving shaft to the driven shaft the disadvantage of uh, the cone clutch is uh, you need to maintain uh, the coaxiality uh, coaxiality of uh, the driving shaft as well as the driven shaft so there should not be any any misalignment here so driving shaft should be a coaxial with the driven shaft and one more disadvantage is uh, there is a tendency to grab if uh, lining uh, friction lining material is going to be worn out more okay so this uh, these are some advantages and disadvantages okay so let us uh, go for a uh, torque analysis of a cone clutch let us go for a uh, torque analysis of a cone clutch so let us consider a cone okay it has an inner diameter di or d1 and uh, the outer diameter d naught let us go for the width of this uh, cone surface as a b and it has a semi cone angle it is what alpha okay it is what alpha now 
the dimensions of uh, cone clutch are uh, mainly depend on uh, the size of the driven shaft you are going to get based on power transmission as well as uh, the provided parameters now let us take uh, a small uh, element of uh, thickness of uh, strip thickness is a dr and at a radius of r Now this is what uh, we consider strip which is at a distance of R which is at a distance of R from the center point. Okay. So let us take this is a DR. Uh, now If you consider the strip over here, okay, strip over here, just to go on for a uh, small strip, it is of a uh, negligible uh, width. Okay. Now, if you draw the strip of thickness dr okay which is at a distance of r now you have a slope here that is what uh, the helix angle sorry the semicone angle let us take this as a alpha now for earlier case uh I have directly calculated uh, the axial force is going to act in excess of rotation this is what fa okay. but here as a pressure is going to be acting with inclination that is what uh, based on uh, the cone angle so the exertion of forces uh, are in a two direction here the exertion of forces are in two direction now let us calculate the pressure is going to act on this uh, portion let us take this as a db that's what a small element width a db now based on uh, a diameter of uh, uh, based on radius you can calculate uh, the axial force okay you can calculate axial force and as you've got uh, two forces here one force is what it is a normal force which is going to act exactly perpendicular to the the cone surface exactly perpendicular to the cone surface and uh, one more force is there that is what radial force one more force is a radial force is going to act exactly normal to the axial force now sorry this is what uh, the normal force okay this is radial force go for more clear Uh, let us refer a uh, hot time book here. Now, uh, if you consider the portion on uh, the lower side, let us take a portion here. Now, this is what uh, B. Now, force is acting. It is what axial force here. Okay. 
and uh, force is going to act exactly perpendicular it is what a radial force and force is going to act in this direction is it is a normal force it is what normal force now if you know the intensity of pressure you can calculate uh, the axial force as well as uh, a normal force now let us calculate uh, the small element area which is going to come in contact with the cup okay. let us take uh, an elemental area considered you have consider a small uh, strip that is what a dr at a di distance of uh, a radius r Okay, now consider an elemental area already have took it is consider an elementary ring of thickness dr we made assumption at a radius r right now let us calculate uh, the area for the elemental ring now area of elemental ring let us go for this as a da this is what 2 pi r is the circumference of that particular uh, ring into its width now if dr is a width or thickness so you are going to get the strip dimension which is going to get in contact with the cup that is what so now this is the area you are going to get in contact with the cup here that is what uh, to the driving member now how will you get this dimension now this is what uh, dr now this is what alpha now you need to calculate this uh, db okay. so now db equal to what uh, dr divided by sine alpha okay now let us substitute here 2 pi r into dr divided by sine alpha now this is the area now let us calculate the normal force on the ring on the elemental ring now this is what fn let us go for dfn elemental ring normal force this is what intensity of pressure into area let us substitute uh, the value of uh, elemental area this is what 2 pi r dr into cosec alpha okay cosec alpha now the axial force axial force on the elemental ring if you resolve normal force in axial direction so what you are going to get this is what P into dA into sin alpha Now if you go on for drawing the triangles here, now 
Now this is a FA. This is FN. Now this is what alpha. This is what alpha. If you resolve it, you are going to get uh, axial force FA. That is what uh, dFA equal to P into dA into sine alpha. Now let us substitute the uh, value of area. What do you got area here? This is what 2 pi r into dr divided by sine alpha into sine alpha. We are missing a p here. Okay. This is what intensity of pressure. Now dfa equal to 2 pi r into dr. 2p pi r into dr. Okay. So let us make this as equation number 1. Normal force. Excel force as a 2. Okay. Now the torque is transmitted. The torque is going to be transmitted from a driving shaft to the driven shaft based on the coefficient of friction between uh, the members that is what a uh, coefficient of friction of a uh, lining member okay. now let us calculate uh, the frictional force on the ring now frictional force on ring let us go for this as a dfv this is equal to what coefficient of friction into the axial force sorry this has to be normal force because uh, the contact of uh, surfaces is in a normal direction not in axial direction okay now this is what f into dfn now let us substitute a uh, value of dfn f p or oh, dfn is what oh, 2 pi r into dr into cosec alpha okay what you got you got first oh, the normal force on elemental ring that is what dfn the axial force as well as uh, the frictional force on the a ring. Now let us go for the frictional torque on the ring. Let us go for this is a D T f now this is equal to what the frictional force into radius that is what uh, uh, consider a radius uh, for that elemental ring now let us substitute now dfp is what coefficient of friction into pressure into pi into 2 pi into r into dr into cosec alpha okay. now this is what uh, df into r now let us simplify small f is a constant, p is constant, 2 pi and uh, the value of uh, cone, semi-cone angle is also constant. What will you get? You are going to get a variable parameters as an r. So let us notify this as equation number 4.
Now, if we integrate the above equations, that is what equation number 1, 2, 3 and 4 from inner radius to the outer radius. So, you are going to get the equations for uh, the axial, normal as well as uh, frictional force as well as frictional torque. Okay? Now, the analysis uh, is to be done uh, based on two criteria. That is what one is what uh, uniform pressure theory and another one is the uh, uniform wear theory. right now let us go for uh, one by one first we'll go for uh, uniform pressure theory Now let us look out uh, the axial force equation for element. This is what uh, 2 pi p into r into dr. Now if you just integrate uh, this equation from the limits of ri to r naught, you are going to get the axial force. Now I will rewrite fa equal to 2 pi into p this is what r i to r naught r square sorry r square by 2 r i to r naught as i said you need to integrate this equation from inner radius to outer radius this is what 2 pi p r dr okay. now if you substitute the limits axial force f a equal to 2 pi p okay into r naught square r i square divided by 2 now let us substitute r naught equal to what d naught by 2 R i equal to D i by 2. If you substitute the value of radius, you are going to get the equation. This is what pi by 4 into P in bracket D naught square minus D i square. Okay. Now this is the equation to calculate the axial force in case of uniform pressure theory okay. so now let us calculate uh, the frictional torque in case of uh, uniform pressure theory So you got equation DTF that is what of frictional torque is equal to 2 P F into pi into R square into dr into cosec alpha. Now just integrate the above equation from uh, limits that is what from inner radius to outer radius you will get a uh, frictional torque. Okay? So integrate uh, this equation to get the frictional torque. So what we will get? So now T equal to let us go for Tf equal to 2 pi P F cosec alpha into r cube divided by 3 limits r i to r naught now let us substitute
what will get tf equal to 2 pi p f divided by sin alpha this is what uh, r naught cube divided by 3 ri cube divided by 3 further simplify tf equal to 2 by 3 pi p f divided by sin alpha in bracket r naught cube minus r i cube now the intensity of pressure so based on the excel force equation so what will get f a divided by pi into r naught square minus r i square okay r naught square minus r i square now let us substitute uh, the value of uh, the equation for uh, pressure Tf equal to 2 by 3 pi into F. Now we will substitute to a pressure equation Fa divided by pi in bracket R naught square minus R i square into R naught cube minus R i. Now further simplify Tf equal to 2 F into Fa divided by three sin alpha three sin alpha in bracket R naught Q minus R I Q divided by r naught square r i square okay. now if you replace r naught equal to d naught by 2 and r i equal to d i by 2 now this torque equation is going to simplify T equal to or Tf equal to 2F into Fa divided by 6 sin alpha in bucket D naught cube minus Di cube D naught square minus Di square. Okay. So now the term, this term is going to be called as an R mean diameter okay. this is going to be called as a mean diameter okay. now let us uh, clarify it is what in last slide we have not considered a 2 by 3 or 2 by 6 term. Let us see. Okay. If you simplify what is the equation you are going to get here. Now Tf equal to F into Fa divided by 2 sin alpha in bucket 2 by 3 d o q minus d i q 
du square minus di square. Now the final equation is f into f a into d m divided by 2 sin alpha. So now for the term d m is 2 by 3 d o q minus d i q d o square minus d i square. So this is called as a uh, mean diameter in uh, uniform pressure theory. Now we can replace uh, Fa by sin alpha as uh, Fn. Okay, so we'll see uh, in formulas. Okay, now this by this equation you can calculate uh, the frictional torque transmitted by the comb clutch. That to based on uh, uniform pressure theory. Now let us go for a uh, next uh, consideration. This is what uniform wear theory. Now in this uniform the wear theory, so to get a uniform wear throughout its surface, you need to consider a constant, uh, some constant here, because you are going to get a variation of pressure in accordance with the radius here. Okay? Now, if you look out, now to get the uniform wear throughout this surface, okay, throughout this surface. So there should be a change in uh, a pressure here. Now if we get a maximum pressure here, uh, we will get a minimum pressure here. Okay. Now the wear rate is going to occur on this entire surface is uh, in uh, correlation with the radial distance from uh, the point of rotation here. That is what axis of rotation. Now for inner radii, you are going to get a maximum pressure out of the radius you are going to get a minimum pressure okay. then only you are going to get an uniform wear here otherwise uh, so the wear may be of a different amount here so you may get uh, less wear here you may get more wear here if the pressure is uniform if the pressure is in for you are going to get a more wear at outer surface and less wear at inner surface. Okay, now what are the condition? So to get the uniform wear, we must have some uh, constant. As I say now, uh, the correlation to get a uniform wear is its radial distance and uh, the intensity of pressure. Okay. Now let us consider a constant C is what uh, P into R, so where P is intensity of pressure, R is the radius. Now to get the intensity of pressure at uh, different positions, this is equal to what C by R, C equal to what it is a constant, it is a constant term, that is what uh, to get the constant here those two are in a proportionate manner okay. now let us look out the axial uh, force equation fa equal to 2 pi r i to r naught p into r into dr if we integrate and if we substitute what will get F A equal to 2 pi F, sorry, F is not there, okay, 
f a equal to 2 pi p into r naught square minus r i square divided by 2. Okay, now uh, instead of this one, you just substitute a constant here. What will you get constant? f a equal to 2 pi c dr okay. because you are going to get a two variation term here one is radius as well as one is pressure now the product of uh, the pressure and uh, the radial distance so to get as a constant let us substitute it as an uh, c that is what constant term now what will happen if you simplify that uh, equation f a equal to 2 pi c r naught minus uh, r i okay now c equal to what f a divided by 2 pi in bracket r naught minus r i right let us uh, have this equation as it is. Now what is the frictional torque? The frictional torque equation what you got? Tf equal to 2 pi into coefficient of friction into angle Ri to R naught so what p into r square into dr okay now let us substitute pi f into cosec alpha into c into r into dr two pi f c cosec alpha r square divided by two r i to r naught 2 pi f c cosec alpha r r square minus r i square over divided by 2. Okay. Tf equal to <coughs> final what we will get pi f c divided by sin alpha in bracket r naught square minus r i square so now let us substitute uh, the value of c from above equation that is xl force equation so now pi into f into f a okay into bracket r naught square r i square all divided by two pi sin alpha r naught minus r i. If you further simplify this one, what will get F into FA R naught plus R I divided by sine alpha 
to sin alpha. Now this is what f into f a into d m divided by sin alpha. sorry now let us substitute r not equal to what d not by 2 r i equal to di by 2 what will get a final equation now this uh, tf equal to f into F A divided by sin alpha into dm. Okay. Now dm is what mean diameter do plus di divided by two. Now this equation stands for calculation of uh, the torque based on a uniform wear theory. Thank you. Stay in home. Stay safe and have a good time with family.